Yo! Yo! What's up? I'm Adam. I'm Phil. Welcome to Guy in a Cube. And as you can see, we've got a special guest. Phil is going to walk us through how do we debug a slow report. Stay tuned. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. All right, Phil, I got a problem. What's your problem? I made this awesome report. It's a little bit slow. Okay. All right. I I, could, do you think you can help me out? I can show you what I do. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to walk through like kind of your process to, you know, try and speed things up. Yeah, that's right. So, so people often send me reports that run slow. Yeah. And what I want to do is show you today the technique I use to narrow down and find how to speed that up. So hopefully I can teach you to fish and you don't need to ring me at three in the morning anymore. I do that a lot. All right. So enough of all this talking. Let's head over to the laptop and see how this works. All right, Phil. So I've got this report. So I've got a blank page just up first because someone told me a while ago, like, you know, have that start with that and then you can figure out where things are going. So what would be the first thing that you would look at? Okay, a recently introduced feature to Power BI Desktop is called the Performance Analyzer. So in the View tab, yep. go and turn on the Performance Analyzer, yep. and in the panel that comes up, hit the Start Record button. Now, go to the page that you want to uh, debug and speed up, yep. and this panel is going to give us some really good early information about what might be going wrong here. So nice. if you, if All right, so we're going to go to the Blazing Fast Report. And if this particular page has more than one visual, the performance analyzer will give you a metric for each one of those visuals. All because right. what you might find, it's just one visual that is, is slowing down the page nice. load. So, All right, so my, my table's up here and it's looking like it took about 7.3 seconds to, to okay. do its thing. Okay, I think we can speed that up. So if you expand the, uh, the visual, yep. And what we're going to do is just copy the query. There's a little co copy query link. If you Got click it. that, that'll paste the query the visual uses into the uh, clipboard. clipboard. Yep. Now, let's jump across to DAX Studio. All right. I just happen to have that running because I knew you were going to ask for that. Cool. So we'll go connect to our Power BI desktop model. Mm -hmm. And we'll hit connect. Bam. And, and let's paste in that query. All right. Whoa, look at that. Cool. Now, the first thing I do in, in DAX Studio is to, on the Run button, I set the clear cache uh, setting so that every time I run this, DAX Studio will clear the cache because that can trip us up. Yep. Uh, if we don't clear the cache, we might start getting super fast results and we think the problem's solved, yep. but we don't want that to... Um... Which is also the reason for that blank page in the beginning. So it hadn't triggered the visual to render, so there's no cached results from that. Exactly. When you're debugging for performance, it's really important to be aware we're, what the cache is doing. Okay. So the second thing I always do is I click on the menu button, the server timing button. Right here, yeah. That's going to give us some really interesting detail about what's going on under the covers to help us narrow in what might be making this particular query slow. Nice. All right. Cool. And then go and run it. Yep, yeah, please do. Right. And we, we should see a, a number that is very similar to what we saw yeah. back in Power BI May desktop. May not be exact, but... Close enough. Yeah. All right. So completed. Let's go to the server timings tab. Okay. All right. So we can see it's saying total time was 3.6 seconds, mm -hmm. uh, which is actually what, if you go back to Power BI Desktop, when we expanded that little thing, it did say the DAX query was like 3.6 seconds. Mm -hmm. So that's good. All right. So we've got a good baseline. Yep. Go ahead and move this up a little bit. There we go. All okay. Right. So what are we looking at here? Okay. Um, apart from the total time, what I want to understand is exactly what kind of work did the uh, query do perform, okay. and we we can see here um, the number of storage engine scans that took place. Yep. Uh, so it's 167 storage engine queries. Yeah, and and that's a lot. Yeah. So what I would be trying to do is to reduce the number of storage engine queries to okay. to, to help speed so, this up. So would you say it's fair that if you see a higher number, like what's a good number you would expect to see? Oh, uh, less than 20. Less than yeah, 20, okay. So yeah. if it's higher than that, it's not necessarily, a, that's not necessarily the reason, but it's usually a tell that there's room for optimization. It's a strong indication yes. that if you, if you attack that, then you probably are going to end up with a better performing report. Great. And if we have a look at the storage engine scans here, we're seeing the same thing repeated over and over and over again. So there's a bit of a clue. Yep, I do. Yeah, I see a lot of these decount okay. items. Now, 
I'll tell you a little bit about the anatomy of a DAX query okay. that Power BI Desktop generates. So looking at the screen here, yep. we can see um, there are some variables <clears throat> that are effectively the filters. This particular report has got a number of filters either in the filter pane or yep. in the slicer. Um, and as we scroll down a little bit, what we should do is uh, look for a summarize columns. Cool. Oh, so there we go. Th that's the meat of the query. Um, oh. And we can see there that there are four uh, filters from line 25 yep. to 28. Yep. And the measures of the query are on line 29 to 31. 30. Yep. So, so perhaps comment out line 28. Uh, 31 and 30. Yeah, comment out two of those lines and just let's see what happens. Right. And it's a bit old school debugging, but just commenting out lines, rerunning it, seeing if it yeah. goes faster or slower can help you zero in on, on what might be. Um, yeah, and I agree. Like coming from support, we did that a lot where it's like trial and error. Sometimes it's trial and error. Spot on. Usually mm -hmm. what I tell people is look, if you've got a gut feeling for something, like mm -hmm. you want to do a sh what I call the shotgun approach, yep. I'll try that once first. And then if that's not giving me any results, then I fall back onto, like, we're just going to go through one by one and figure out where it is. That's right, we can uncomment yep. baby steps yep. and we're probably gonna get some useful feedback by taking this approach, awesome. so. All right, so let's go and run this. And we got our comma issue. Yeah, be careful with commas. <laughs> every time, every time. There we go, batch completed, that was way faster. We're down to two storage engine queries and we're at 58 milliseconds. Nice. We're done. Right, we're done, so. <laughs> What do we start at? Three and a half seconds. So, so the problem is likely to be in one of those two measures. Right. Okay. And looking at the title of the second measure, it's yep. distinct count. Now, distinct count is often a uh, it's it's a hard measure for any BI system to, to work with. So I'm guessing that yep. the it's likely to be in that. So okay, let's let's uncomment this measure. Um, let's grab the measure name because what we're going to do is not go back to Power BI Desktop to make modifications modifications to the measure. Let's modify it here in Dax Studio. All right, and so... You click the search button. Yeah, we can go over the search and we can just paste the name in. Paste it in. Right that, there. That filters down the uh, metadata to show the measure. Yep. Now, if you right click on that measure name, in the context menu that comes up, uh, you can click on the define measure uh, option. Yeah. And that's going to create a copy of the measure nice. locally here in DAX Studio for you. Now right. we can play with that measure. Yep. And it's not destructive. I'm not messing with anything in the model. No. I'm just going to play around with it here and see what I can do to make it faster. Exactly, because we might cool. make it worse. And, and then ultimately, if we can get it running faster and when we're happy, yep. that's when we can take it back to the model. And I know when I do things, usually always the first time I do something, it's probably not going to work. By right clicking on define measure, it's going to put a copy of the measure at the very top of the text. So yep. if you scroll up to the top, yeah, okay, we can see that so there. Model measures begin, model okay. measures end. Yeah, and we have a calculate distinct count. Let's write the distinct count a slightly different way. Awesome. Uh, so if you comment out that line, the distinct count line six. Yeah. And what I'd like you to try is to use sumx, open bracket, yep. values of open bracket, and then the column that we're performing a distinct count over, which I believe is sales customer, customer key. key. Yeah. Close bracket, comma one. Oh, comma one. Close bracket, comma. Got it. Cool. So this is just an alternative way of generating <laughs> a distinct count. So we'll get exactly the same result. We're just we're just trying a different method. This particular method works very well when you have low cardinality values in the results. But hey, give it a crack. Let's, yeah, um, yeah. All right. So we'll just run it. Yeah. Just just All try right. it. All right. Three hundred and fifty-one milliseconds. Twenty storage engine queries. And that's down from that was one hundred and sixty some odd queries and three point six seconds. Cool. So that's pretty good. All right, so a couple things that I'm picking up here. Mm -hmm. One is so uh, the whole distinct count versus sum x. Yep. That's not a guarantee that that's always going to make it faster. In this case, it did make it faster because our rows weren't exactly. super large. Yeah, right? the, the, it might be the opposite. Right. On a different data set. Right. You know. Right. So, so that's not trial. necessarily the the key takeaway here. Correct. I think the bigger thing here is the approach of how we're going to actually troubleshoot this with limiting what these queries are doing, limiting, mm -hmm. trying to narrow down which measure might be actually contributing to the problem and then going to adjust that measure. That's right. Talk to me a little bit about the storage engine queries and why that's a key okay. to you in terms of 
performance problems. Okay, the analogy I like to use about the storage engine and when and, and how that works in a, in the query is imagine you're uh, baking a cake and you need a bunch of ingredients. I like cakes. You, you need you need ten ingredients. Now you wouldn't go to the shop. Uh, 10 different times to get the eggs and then another time to get the flour and then yep. the sugar exact what you want to do is make one trip to the shop collect all the ingredients and then bring them back so that's it's not that we're lazy we're efficient exactly yeah and and that's exactly what power bi desktop is doing Got it. in those storage and queries it's, it's going out to get the the data and bring it back so if yeah. you can collect more ingredients with fewer trips then so you're going to get you're more efficient and it's going to be faster. It's going to be cake time sooner. Oh, yeah, beautiful. Except we got to bake it, and then, but that's a whole other. That's a different video. That's right. Hopefully, this gives you some clues of what you can do in terms of troubleshooting. So first, start with the performance analyzer inside of Power BI Desktop. That can give you some key tells and mm -hmm. allow you to narrow down on things. That's right. And then we take it into a tool of your choice. It doesn't have to be DAX Studio. It doesn't it, have to be, but nope. there are lots of neat features yes. in DAX Studio to I give agree. you this information front and yes. center. Yes. yes, yes. So, but there are other ways to do it. Uh, but basically just get the original DAX query and then we've just got to run it, try it, clear the cache, those types of things, mm -hmm. uh, and just go and do the hard work of troubleshooting, narrowing it down. Now, sometimes the uh, the bottleneck will be in the measure. Yep. Other times it might be a particular filter. Yep. So if you just go and comment it out in the query, you might yep. find that it's a, a very slow filter uh, that, that is making the difference to the Yeah, um, so for example, one time we had uh, an item where they had a really big fact table and they were doing the filter on the fact table instead of on the dimension. Mm -hmm. But we went through this kind of same process to figure that out, like, okay, that was definitely causing that problem. Yeah, that's right. To, to comment out a line or three here, yeah. it's very quick and easy to do. Run yeah. it, make sure you clear the cache, and yep. just keep your eye on the storage engine scans. Well, and, and in the, that example that I saw where we were filtering the fact table, the end result, it was a model issue, right? Yeah. So they didn't actually have it out as a dimension. They were, yeah, so, but, but so it could be a model issue, it could be a DAX issue. This process will help you narrow in on Exactly. That. To take the detail across into DAX Studio, it's yes. much easier to flesh out yep. than doing it back in Power BI Desktop. Yes. Yep. So. And, and quicker to tweak things, try it again. And, and now we can go and grab that Right. The code from the measure that we made a copy of yep. and put that back into our Power BI right, desktop yeah, we report. we got to finish that up, right? Because we haven't fixed anything. Refresh the, <laughs> the, the, the metric yep. and we will have a faster Sorry, query. Right what do you guys think? I want to pass this off to you. Was this helpful? Does this help you maybe get a little more comfortable and confident in terms of troubleshooting performance inside a Power BI desktop? Let us know down in the comments below. There's a lot of other techniques as well, but I think this is a great starting point that you can work with to take your game to the next level. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick, myself, and Phil, thank you so much for watching, keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.